In this video, we're going to discuss how to organize your products once you've connected your Amazon account and all the data has been pulled from Seller Central into SoStock. So if you go up here to your inventory page on your left main menu here, you're going to see all of these products that have been pulled in from Seller Central. This is our inventory dashboard and right now this is set up to look at all active products. As you can see, we've got a lot of different buttons right here. Try not to be overwhelmed. We're going to go through the basics of it right now. You got your product image, product name, ASIN SKU, and some basic data. There's a lot of different data that we do pull in. You don't have to look at all of it. Um, just so you know, there's a lot of different columns that are available to turn on, and the default setting is only some of them, but there's a lot of data that we've added and sorted through. So you can go here and turn off a lot of these columns if it's overwhelming for you, and some of these will just go away. Right now what we're looking at is there's a filter that's automatically placed on this default dashboard and it's just status is active. So a big warning here, when we pull information in from Seller Central the first time, if the product hasn't sold any units in the last several months, that product will be marked as inactive. And the reason that's set up that way in SoStock is so we're not pulling in a lot of old inventory that's no longer selling. We're not cluttering your SoStock account. For example, if you are a retail arbitrage seller and these are products that you sold once or twice and then never sold again. There are a lot of users in SoStock that have accounts like that. So we try to make a setting so that we're not pulling in old inventory that's no longer active. So what you might find is you go, hey, I'm, I'm missing some inventory here. Where did it go? The first thing that you should do before you contact us is go up here to filters and change this active into inactive and then apply filters to see if any of these products are still active, but we're just marked them as inactive. In other words, do you still want to have these showing up in your account? Um, you can go to like your total FBA stock, for example, and you might want to actually sort this in descending. Uh, in this case, none of our products have any, but that way you could see the ones that are actually, that, that still have inventory at Amazon FBA, and you could mark those over here and go to bulk actions and then mark them as active and that would put them back into your active products list. Now you also might find products that you really don't want to look at anymore. Maybe you're not selling them, maybe they're seasonal products and they're just kind of cluttering your view. Again, it's similar. You can just check any of the products that you're not selling anymore. You can go up to bulk actions and you can either make them inactive or you can hide them. Now inactive means that they won't show up anywhere on SoStocked except in the inactive filter, as I just showed you. The other option is to hide products. So let's say there's some products that you just want to hide. Maybe I just want to hide them from my inventory page view. This is my inventory page that we're on right now. If I check that box and I confirm, these products will be hidden, and I can always find them again, as I showed you, using that filter. But there's a couple of other options here. Let's say I wanted to keep it on my inventory page, but I wanted to snooze reordering and transfers. Let me explain what that means. I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but you got to understand what reordering and transferring means. Up here on our forecast page, which we'll talk about later, once you get all your forecasting set up, th these green buttons are basically recommendations to order new inventory from your supplier. Brand new inventory, whether you're a wholesaler or whether you're retail arbitrage or a private label seller from your manufacturer. And then the, the blue button is transfer. So that's existing inventory that I have at a warehouse. Going back here, if I were to make these hidden, if I were to hide these products, I do have the option to snooze the ordering or even snooze the transferring. Now, why would I want to do that? I just want to keep it in my inventory page, but I don't really want it to be reminding me every month or every week to order new inventory or to transfer inventory from my warehouse. So I have those options. Um, the other option is, let's say it's a seasonal product. And um, here's an example. It's a Christmas time product. I don't want to snooze it forever, but if I click this forever button, I can actually snooze that product on my forecast page until a particular date. So I could snooze this until, you know, August or January or whatever, and then it won't bother me until that happened, until that date. So those are your two options. The last example I'll give here is, let's say I'm liquidating a product. I have a bunch of inventory at my warehouse, but I'm never going to order it ever again. It's just not profitable or whatever reason. I'm just trying to sell through it on Amazon. 
So I can snooze reordering, but I could leave transfers open, right? Uh, so it's going to remind me to make those transfers, but never to reorder again. So you've got some options here. You can tag those products and confirm here. These are just options to help you organize your inventory page to get your process going. You can add certain products as favorites. So right here on this button, we've got add to favorites. And what that'll do is it'll make a little heart next to it. Now, normally, if you've got this sorted, the default setting, all of your heart, your favorite products will be up top. I have it actually sorted descending by total FBA stock, but normally you would just have all of your favorite products up here. The last thing I want to talk about are the dashboards, and there's a whole training video on this later, but as you can see, we've got all these different buttons up top. These are called dashboards. And so all a dashboard is, I'll click on this one. So if I click on favorites, it's actually going to pull up all the products that I have tagged as favorites. And as you can see, all it's really doing is it's just adding a filter, favorite equals yes. Once you're getting used to the system, feel free to look through here and start playing with the filters, and you can actually create your own dashboard. I'm not gonna get too much into that because I don't wanna overwhelm you, but you do have some customization here. You are um, able to sort ascending or descending. Um, you can also go ahead and lock the column in place so you can kind of scroll across similar to a spreadsheet. You've got some other options there. You can auto width, which will basically just make the cell the same width as whatever text is in there. And you can move columns around in a different order if you prefer. And as I mentioned before, you can turn on or turn off columns by using that button. So play around with those settings. When you get a dashboard set up just the way you want it, go up here and add as a new dashboard, give it a name, and if you save it as a favorite, it'll make a new button up top. And if you just save the green save button, it will put it in your drop down menu of a lot of different dashboards that we've got here. Okay. So that's basically it for organizing your inventory page. In the next video, we're going to talk about setting up your vendors, your suppliers, your warehouses, and your warehouse inventory.